Hey, what's going on everybody? So I have been getting a lot of requests for some more how-to videos and primarily in the how to do bow maintenance and bow mechanic, be a bow technician type stuff. So we're going to continue to add to that, okay? We have some good information on how to tie cat whiskers, a peep sight, but we're going to show you how to tie in a set of knocking points and a D-loop. So we're going to use the BCY 3D material. This is a .19 in diameter. This works really good for peep sights, activation cords, obviously tying in a knock set, and also like for a soft kisser button, pine ridges, D-loop material. I think this is some of the best on the market. Has a good memory. It's pretty stiff, which I like. Um, I don't want. I just don't like the flimsy, soft material. Again, that's a personal preference. So you just need to figure out. Get you a couple feet of each. See which one you like the best. It doesn't cost that much money uh, to get this stuff. And again, make it in every color under the sun. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead, hop over here, and show you how to get started. All right. So the first thing that you're gonna need is you're gonna need an arrow, and you're gonna have to identify your knocking point. Okay. Most bows of today like to be 90 degrees from the rest okay and that's a good starting point to get to so we're going to go ahead and pretend i've already done that with this knock so this is going to be the knock i'm going to use for this if you shoot a lighted knock i'm going to highly recommend that you tie this knocking point in with your hunting knock with whatever knock you were going to hunt with uh, shoot targets with whatever that case may be so you're going to need a piece of this material, I got it cut roughly about 16 inches long. And I like to have long tail ends, that way I can get these knots really, really tight because you don't want them to slip. And the way I'm gonna tie them, I'm gonna start on top and I wanna run this knock point flush with that knock. Okay, and I'm just gonna do it one overhand. And I'm just gonna get on there. And like I said, I wanna run it as flush to that knock as possible. I'm gonna tie it, I'm gonna cinch it down. Okay, then I'm going to come underneath it and I'm going to work up towards the uh, top, lip, top set of limbs and lay my knocks that away. So. I usually do five, four to five on top. But for this purpose of the video, we're going to do five because it's going to put the knot on top so we can see how it's finished. Okay, so, so the way that I finish these is I get it really, really tight on one, and I just do a square knot on it, just right there. Then I'm gonna take a razor blade, and I'm literally going to only leave a teeny tiny bit, like an eighth of an inch or less if you can. Again, we're gonna start the same way. Do a half hitch overhand, or an overhand knot right there. Now on the bottom one, you're gonna wanna leave some gap. Okay, see I've got some wiggle room right there. That's all the slack or slop you're gonna want in this. It's gonna be roughly 16th of an inch. Now we did five on the top. We're gonna do eight to 10 on the bottom. Okay, so we're just gonna see how that kind of lays out. It might be nine. Uh, I just want to make sure for the video purpose, it's gonna have my knot on top, just so we can see how it's finished and everything is done. And at the end, I will give you the reason as to why you want more knots on the bottom versus the top. So again, on the bottom, we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna do nine and we're gonna do the overhand. We're just gonna put another overhand knot directly on top of that one, making a square knot and finishing that off. Again, we'll take my little blade. All right, so now you have successfully tied in your knocking points. So from this point, you would drop your arrow. So roll your string out, bring your flame up, melt that, tap it down, same thing right here. So now you are ready to tie a D-loop. First thing you need to do is you need to take one of these ends, just repetitively smack it with your finger until you get that thing flared out something like here let me to get it flared out something like that right there okay then you're going to take your flame and you do not want to burn this you want to melt it you're just going to mushroom that with your lighter 
see we got us a nice little mushroom right there. We're going to start on the top side. It's the way I always start them. This is for a right-handed archer. It's going to be opposite for left-handed. So I bring my string under. And I want my burnt end to go on the knock side. Like that. And I'm going to twist it and come back under and over. Okay, which is going to put the knot away from your face. So it doesn't matter which way you face your knots, they just have to face different. The reason you want them to face different, they will pull against each other, they will pull your peep sight back correctly, they will not slip, and they're going to be a lot less prone to movement, okay, because they're working against each other. <laughs> what I like to do is I want to get this top knot as tight as I can before I go any farther. So, sorry for the blurriness, I'm trying to get it in focus. I'm going to take these pliers and I want to push this loop together. Be careful not to get your string, but you can see how it's already tightening up that the little mound that we made on the D-loop. I'm going to tighten it up. I'm also going to do this number right here to make sure it gets tight. Spin it on top right there. And to tie the bottom one, you go on the back side or the power side where your cables are. You're going to bring the tag in. You're going to run it to the knock side. Okay, you're going to pull it kind of tight. Then you're going to go back on the uh, sight window side of your bow. And then you're going to come back through. Okay. Now I like to use roughly five to six inches of D-loop material. I know that's going to be some waste, but I can get this D-loop to the length I need it. And I can make sure that I have a good spot to pull and tighten this bottom knot from before I do anything, okay? Which is what I'm going to do now. So again, I'm going to take my pliers. I'm going to scrunch that knot down. And I want to pull it that way. Okay. Now whenever I stretch this, it's going to make a really nice D-loop. And it's going to be a really good length to start at. So again, you're going to want to leave about a quarter of an inch of D-loop left on there. Just like that. And you're just going to take your finger, just like you did whenever it was just uh, before we started tying it. Hit that thing, you know, a dozen times or so. Get it to poof out and flare out. Now you take your flame back to it. And again, do not melt it. Or do not burn it. You want to melt it. So just like that. And then you flare it out. Okay, now do yourself a favor, give that 15 to 20 seconds to cool off so whenever you go to stretch this, it does not pull through and that way you don't have to worry about it sinking in any deeper or anything like that and whenever you go to draw your bow, it's not going to bust loose and punch you in the face. That's not a very fun thing to go through. So what we're going to use is we're going to use just some regular old needle nose pliers. D-loop pliers work, obviously they're built for this, but I also have, let me focus in right here. So I have some grooves that I have dremeled into a set of needle nose pliers that way I didn't have to go out and buy them. I can't find those at the moment so we're just going to use these okay. Or open your pliers. You've stretched your D-loop. That's a really that's a nice length. That's a good starting point. You can see we still have some gap there. Drop the arrow back in. We still have plenty of gap in our knocks, so they didn't. It's not going to pull your your uh, your knocks together. This is just a. If you don't have a pair of knocking pliers, needle nose pliers are just as good. And you can see we have a nice D loop. There's a good three quarters of an inch, maybe even a little bit more, on that D loop before it's on the knock. Again, you can adjust this before you tighten everything down by simply making this a little bit longer or shorter based on your needs. Alright, I hope that there was enough detail and enough good video footage there to show you how to go ahead and tie a set of knock points in a D-loop. Now I'm going to tell you why you want to tie you a set of knocking points. Okay, one of the biggest reasons is the fact of knock pinch. Okay, so anytime any point in your shot cycle or your draw cycle, my bad, your arrow wrist wants to kick up. You're getting knock pinch. Okay, and that's that's bad. 
Okay, it may at full draw come back down, but guess what? When it goes back through that shot cycle, it's going to want to kick that arrow up, which is going to sell that high. You're going to chase a bad tear. You're going to inconsistent broadhead flight the whole nine. Okay, so with the knock points and that little gap is going to, whenever this thing gets back to full draw and even any point in the draw cycle, it's going to keep my arrow on my wrist. Okay, that's the point of the knocking points. So let's say you snag your D loop on something or it starts getting some really bad wear and tear on it while you're there you can go ahead you can with confidence because you know your bow is in tune you can cut off your d-loop and replace it and you don't have to worry about finding another knocking point or finding the knocking point again to get it to shoot straight because you already have that there by just tying them by tying five on the top and nine or ten on the bottom it brings this bottom knot down and I, I've got some close-up footage of it but I want to show you exactly where your release is that's directly behind your knock, which is gonna keep everything in a straight line. So it's right behind your knock. If you don't do this, you're going to, you can experience some knock pinch, but a lot of times your, your release will come above your knock. So it's coming down versus relieving, leaving your release straight, okay? Another reason that it's a good idea to do this is it makes your D-loop a little longer. And you might say, think that a shorter D-loop is better, but I'm telling you, from a tuning aspect, I feel a uh, short D-loop is the worst thing you can do and put on a bow. Here's why. So if you don't have a manipulating release like this beast right here, what's going to happen is if you have any sort of cant in your hand whenever you anchor, you, we can see right there that it's twisting this D-loop. Whenever you are at full draw, there is no pressure, no tension on your string. So it's manipulated side to side. So you're going to get some string torque. And also shooting a handheld release, if you roll your hand too much, again, you're going to have that string torque. So making your D-loop a little bit longer is going to make your shot a little bit more forgiving on that aspect too. And with a hook style or a caliper style release, they're just easier to hook on. You don't have to fight the back of your knock and risk unseating your knock and having a potential dry fire or drawing your bow back and your arrow falls off your arrow rest. I'm subscribed to the channel because once we hit a thousand subscribers, give away a thermal hog hunt. And also, don't forget to go back and look at some of the bow reviews. We reviewed a bunch of the 2020 bows, so if there's one that you got your eye on, I bet you I've already reviewed it, and it should be up on the channel by now. So until we talk next time, God bless.